Tonight, we once again delve into the witchy world of Ouija boards. People around the world continue to be fascinated by them, and they first came out 130 years ago. Even the Kardashians don't have that kind of shelf life. Be sure to join me here every Thursday at 5 p.m. Central for new content. And if you'd like to hear more stories like this, click on the end screen or on the link in the pinned comment below. But for now, sit back, relax, let me lead the way, and let's get scared together, 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 together. This happened to my cousin. He, his best friend, my other cousin, and my uncle were all using a Ouija board in their basement one night. Before they began, they took a large porcelain doll out of the room because it was creeping them out and they put it in the adjacent laundry room, face down on a pile of towels. As they played, they wrote down the answers to the questions they asked, but none of the replies made any sense. During the game, my cousin took a bathroom break, and while he was gone, the others decided to test the board by asking it. Who just left the room? The planchette just started pointing to a random series of numbers. When my cousin came back, his brother said that the board wasn't working, so they were going to stop playing and put it away. They told him that they had asked the board who left the room when he went to the bathroom, and they showed him the strange reply. My cousin said, Dude, that's my social security number. Well, suddenly they were all interested again, and they began asking questions. They asked about their futures, and it told my cousin that he would join the military and die in the Air Force. At that point, they asked the entity to prove itself and show them that it was telling them the truth. It then slowly spelled out the word D-O-L-L. -L. It was then that they remembered that they put the doll in the laundry room. When they opened the door to check on it, the doll was standing upright in front of the door, staring at them. They all freaked and ran out of the house. His best friend buried the Ouija board, and I think he went temporarily insane for a few months, too. Even after that, though, for some reason, my cousin recently joined the Air Force, and he's currently stationed at a base in Europe. When I was in the sixth grade, I was obsessed with ghosts. Now, I never had any reason to believe that my house was haunted. But one day, my eight-year-old brother came home from school, claiming that he, quote, found $10 out of nowhere. So I asked him where the money really came from. The story he gave me was that a young girl about the age of seven had followed him onto the school bus that afternoon. He said he never met the girl or even seen her around school, but she decided to sit right in front of him. After riding the bus for a little while, she started talking to him. But according to my brother, nobody else could see or hear this little girl but him. He said the others were giving him weird looks. She handed him a $10 bill with a note, then got off the bus at the next stop. Of course I assumed he was lying and laughed at him. I asked him to show me the note if it was true, and he promptly showed me a tiny piece of paper. A shiver ran down my spine because the note was not in his handwriting. It read, I'll help you, but only this time. We believe that was in response to the fact that my brother had been begging my parents for a Zelda charm bracelet for months and they refused to buy it for him. Now that he had a $10 bill, he could just buy it for himself. Of course, me being me, I was extremely intrigued by this even if it did seem absurd. I suggested we put together a makeshift Ouija board and see if we could contact someone. So we wrote the alphabet and numbers on a piece of paper and grabbed a necklace to use as a planchette. After asking a few questions, the necklace began to move and shake. Either my brother was really good at tricking me by slowly sliding the necklace across the board, or it really did contact something paranormal. The spirit said her name was Kate, and after asking some dumb questions like, Do you watch me playing video games? And getting the reply of yes, my brother and I decided to stop for the night because we were kind of getting creeped out. 
But we never did say goodbye to the board before ending, like you're supposed to. After that, though, playing with the board became a daily thing. We thought we'd made a friend and truly believed that someone named Kate was talking to us. We decided to go a step further and try to record something. So we both got our tablets, placed them in front of the TV, and hit record. The first thing I asked was, if someone is here, move something in the room for us. Nothing happened. I thought, okay, maybe the ghost is shy today. We decided to ask the same question, but this time tell it that we would leave the room to give it time to move something. So we went downstairs for five minutes. And when we went back upstairs, both of our tablets had fallen to the floor and stopped recording. Maybe a coincidence? I mean, it's easy for things to fall over if you're not careful. So we just brushed it off. In December of that year, though, things got really weird. I started hearing voices in my head claiming that they were the ghost I was talking to while playing Ouija board. I was so scared I'd sleep with a Bible, and I'm not even religious. Eventually, I broke down and told my mom that there was a ghost telling me scary things in my head. I won't go into detail of what it said, because some of it was pretty graphic. She and my father argued for quite a while about whether or not I was schizophrenic, and if they should bring me to a therapist or not. So, out of fear of being labeled crazy, I never told them about hearing the voices again. But I'd often space out while having conversations with this thing. Eventually, I forgot about it all, and I no longer heard the voice. I'll never know for sure what it was. Was I truly insane, or were they just intrusive thoughts? Either way, I'm glad they stopped. Nothing necessarily paranormal has happened to me since, besides, well, my TV turning on and off at random times in the night, or feeling an unseen force push or pull me. But I just put that down to my imagination playing tricks on me. I still do have this overwhelming feeling, though, that ever since I played with the Ouija board, there's a spirit attached to me. Nothing bad, just a looming presence. I have a friend named Andrew who practiced Satanism in high school. He would actually invite demons to possess him through the Ouija board. He and some of his crazy friends would go down into the sewers and paint pentagrams and hold seances down there. He said at first, not much happened. But then one night, he and a friend went to the sewer with a Ouija board to summon whatever demon they could. They sat opposite one another with a board between them, and at one point in the game, they asked the demon, Will you take us? And before they even finished the question, his friend was literally dragged backwards about six feet, like something straight out of a horror movie. But instead of getting scared, they thought it was cool. So his friend scooted back to the board, and they requested that the spirit do it again. Then suddenly, a huge black dog appeared, in the sewer. It just stood there watching and growling at them. If they tried to approach the dog, he would bark violently and stand his ground like he was guarding something. Well, that finally freaked them out and they hightailed it out of there. Andrew told me that he thinks he opened a portal of some sort, allowing the demon to come through, and the dog was protecting that portal. Obviously, none of this is concrete proof, but I've heard so many creepy stories involving Ouija boards from so many different types of people, many of whom didn't even believe in them before their own experience, so it's hard for me to completely discredit them. I'm pretty sure I'll never play with one, though. Last year, I stayed for a couple of weeks at a church parish. A priest there had a case pertaining to the Ouija board. A young man had come to his office a few months before and told Father that he had been to three other churches and they either turned him down or didn't believe him. So he came to him because he was a Catholic priest. The story goes that the boy's grandmother had gotten him a Ouija board about a year prior. 
He played with it and made contact with something. He began to feel the need to use the Ouija board every single day, more and more. It got to the point that if he wasn't using it multiple times a day, he became extremely ill. He knew he needed help, but it was difficult to find because no one believed him, not even his parents. The priest went to the boy's home, trying to explain to his parents that the supernatural is in fact a real thing, and their son needed help. After speaking to them, he convinced the parents to allow him to bless the home and take the Ouija board away. When he got back to the parish, he attempted to burn the board. However, it simply wouldn't burn. Even after pouring gasoline on it, it wouldn't ignite. He then tried to tear the board up, but he couldn't even make a scratch on it. He found all of this very disturbing because it was just a cheap board, something you'd buy in a toy store. It should have been easily destroyed. He then performed a minor exorcism on it, blessed the board, and then tried to burn it again. This time, the board went up in flames in a matter of seconds. Anybody who thinks these boards are just a game is sadly mistaken. When I was about 12 or 13 years old, I spent the night at a friend's house when his parents were gone. He, his younger sister, and I were goofing around with the Ouija board, but we weren't getting anything but nonsense replies. We didn't care. We were just goofing around, having fun, trying to scare ourselves. But then we got two messages. The first was, I see you through the window. And the second, I see you through its eyes. We were in the basement and there was a small window that looked out onto the yard in the driveway. We asked where it was and it said, under the car. We somehow found the nerve to go outside with the flashlight and peer under the car where we saw a huge black stray cat staring back at us. We all ran back inside, terrified, and at that exact moment, the power failed and the lights in the entire house all went out at the same time. We huddled together, absolutely horrified. A few minutes later, the power came back on, and we sat up until dawn completely terrified, and we never played with the Ouija board again. My stepfather is the kind of man who doesn't lie, ever. Which is why I believe the story of a Ouija board experience he had when he was younger. He had friends over and they wanted to play the Ouija board. After a while, they made contact with something that said it was a demon. His friends were asking the questions, but the thing focused on him. The demon told my stepdad that it would visit him later that night, after midnight. Well, they got thoroughly freaked out and put the board away. My stepdad fell asleep, and he was awakened precisely at midnight. Now the demon had told him its name, but my stepdad refused to tell me. He's afraid to speak its name even to this day. Anyway, he said this thing woke him up, and that it was just sitting there, grinning at him. The demon told him that the first child he would have would die. Then... It disappeared. After that, my stepdad tried to get rid of the board. He threw it out in the trash, but that didn't work. He said a few days later, a little boy that he had never seen before showed up to his door with the Ouija board. He handed it to my stepdad and said, This is yours, and left. Completely afraid now, my stepdad tried to burn it, but it simply wouldn't catch fire. The fire kept dying out no matter what he did. So he dug a very deep hole in the backyard and put the board in it, placed a Bible on top, and buried it. He's not seen the board since. As for what the demon predicted, it did come true. His first wife miscarried her first pregnancy three months in. I wholeheartedly believe my stepdad's story. And that's why I have never messed with a Ouija board, and never will.
I'm going to start out by saying that I'm not convinced that Ouija boards are real. Anything that requires human interaction has a lot of room for error. But having said that, I had an experience with one, and I've come to realize that it may not even matter if the message comes from the other side or simply from our own subconscious. This happened about a year ago. I was in a pretty dark place emotionally, and I had been for a couple of months. I was thinking a lot about not wanting to be alive anymore. Some friends and I were hanging out. They'd used a Ouija board a few times before and thought it was pretty cool. Honestly, I didn't really believe their stories, since I had used it a couple of times when I was younger and nothing happened. Still, they wanted to play, so I joined in. We asked if anyone was there, and it said yes. Then we asked if it wanted to speak to anyone in particular. It immediately spelled out my name. What surprised me was how quickly and forcefully the planchette moved to spell my name. When we asked what it wanted to tell me, it spelled out, Don't Die. I won't give you a play-by-play -play of the rest of the conversation, but it basically told me that I was a good person and that things would get better. It really freaked my friends out and led to some pretty awkward questions from them about my emotional state. This was a positive experience, and regardless of what caused it, I'm happy to have had it, because it was exactly what I needed to hear at the time. True story. It was Halloween 1994, and I had dropped some acid around 5 p.m. About half an hour later, I told a girl that I had a crush on that I was tripping. She got a mischievous look in her eye and said, Come on over to my dorm room, and we'll break out the Ouija board. Well, I'm game for anything, so I went. Her roommate was there, and we cracked open some beers, then got out the Ouija board. I caught them giving each other looks like they were saying, we're going to have fun with this. I got the sense that they were going to try to prank me because I was on acid. Fair enough. We started playing, but at first nothing happened, until she turned the questions on me. Both of our hands were on the planchette, and she asked the alleged spirit, who do you want to speak to? I could feel her guiding the thing to spell out my name. Then she asked, What do you want to tell him? And she spelled out, Soul. I knew what was up, but I was happy to play along. She was cute and it was Halloween, so who cares? Then she asked the final question, Who are you? And she moved the thing to six, then another six, and finally a third six. But as soon as the planchette stopped on the last six, there was blood. Hers. Her own blood started pouring from her nose for no reason. Not a drop or a trickle, but like a hemorrhage. And out of just one nostril, too. It began as one little drop leaving a perfect line down her upper lip. Then it was like someone turned on a faucet and the blood just came gushing out of her nose. Now remember, I was on acid. So this was like heaven to me. I thought it was hilarious and started laughing uncontrollably. This chick and her roommate were screaming and crying while I was laughing, and they were looking at me like I was the devil himself. They really didn't speak to me again after that. Totally worth it. I don't know about you, but the more I find out about these boards, the more intrigued I become. Now don't get me wrong, I'm still not going to play with one, but they sure are interesting. You never know what you're going to get. Good, bad, evil, tears, fear, laughter. It's very tempting, isn't it? Thank you so much for listening tonight. Be sure to click on the end screen if you want to hear more stories like this so you can stay scared until we meet again, my friends.